Hello and welcome to the 52nd video in this series for beginners programming in C. So this video I've done very little preparation. Um, I haven't got much time at the moment. It's been like this for a couple of months now. Um, but I think I can get away with actually not doing this video. Usually I do each video beforehand and then write out all the code and make sure I know what I'm actually wanting to talk about. But I think I can get away with doing this one as is. So what we're going to talk about in this one is something that's very simple um, to use. But when you first start programming in C, at least it was for me, it looks a bit complicated to look at. But actually can make your programs uh, a lot easier and a lot less code. And that is preprocessor definitions. Um, you may be wondering what one of those is or what they are. Well, all it is is when you type a hash like so, like before the include, before the include stdio.h, you're telling the compiler to pre-process whatever is on that line. And what the compiler does when it runs through your code, it creates, if you have preprocessor commands in there, a temporary file of your code including these commands executed, which you'll see in a minute what, what actually happens, and then compiles that resulting code. So what does all of that mean? Well, what it basically means is, is we can define and make sort of if and else if statements in our code, and whatever we state with our preprocessor statements will then be be uh, inserted into our code. So it's, it's better if I show some examples of how this works and then you get the idea very, very quickly. So if I type a hash and define, I'm saying here that I'm just going to define something. So I'll say uh, I'll define num bottles. And then if I just put a space and let's put 10, this would have defined num bottles as the number 10, which means wherever in my program I put num bottles, the preprocessor, so that when the compiler runs through the code, it will replace every occurrence of num bottles with 10, literally one for the other. So if I just make a printf statement here, like so, and put a new line, and in fact, because we'll be using probably a few printfs, I'm actually going to copy that so I can always have that in the future. We can now write something like let's actually print our num bottles to the screen just to see that it's working okay so we have a d and num bottles like so and I'll save that I'll just bring over the compiler now one thing I did prepare was the compile statement to make it a bit quicker and I'll run the program and you can see that we've printed the value of num bottles which is 10 now you might think well that's not very good it's a bit of a waste of time it's quicker to type 10 well this is true but often what happens is in C programs particularly if you take a look at the chess series for example you end up with lots of um, reoccurring numbers in the program. So for instance, in chess program I had one of the, the squares numbered 0 to 63 and the square A1 is 0, but also the colour white was 0. It's easy when you're looking at your code, say we have a, an if statement that says if my variable equals 0. Now when you're looking at your code and you're trying to find bugs or whatever, you might be wondering, well what's the 0 there for? Well, it might be if you had white there instead, if white was defined as naught, then it's easier to know, OK, we're looking for a, a particular color in, the, in the, the case of the chess game. Or if you had a one, you would know that we were looking for the square, even though both of those have the same definition. So it often as your programs get complicated, it becomes a very, very good idea to define um, uh, various numbers and things with a name here so you actually know what it is and popular convention is usually to put these in capital letters but at the end of the day you can do whatever whatever you want so another another idea of um, defining we can also say let's define minion and we could put a string there and say hello I am a minion like so and you can tell I've watched the Despicable Me films this weekend and again if I just go here now to print, I can now print our minion to the screen like so and minion and again if I just bring over and compile then what we'll get hopefully and here we get the string printed ILO I am a minion because it's simply the preprocessor has substituted this occurrence here for the defined string here. What you can also do is you can start using with the preprocessor things like if and else. So we can use something to say something like a hash, so for preprocessor, and if def. So this is saying if defined, 
And now we have to say what is defined. So we'll say if we have defined in our preprocessor minion, which we have above here, then execute all the statements coming after this if def until we say end if, like so. So this will print this line if we've defined minion. So if I just run the program again inside the terminal, it'll do exactly the same as before. But let's say I undefine minion. So I'll just put a space here and save for now. And now bring the compiler back and compile the program and run. You'll see that we don't print minion to the screen because minion hasn't been defined. And a particular application of using this that you can think of maybe straight away is if you've got, say, debug defined. Oops, sorry, define. And then you can have various statements in your program saying if def debug, then maybe print something to the screen, otherwise don't. Another thing we can do is we can say if def minion, then print our minion to screen. Otherwise, we can say else and we'll do something else and then end our definition. So we can then print f and then we can, let's say, print minion not defined. Uh, like so. I'll just delete this and delete this. And now it'll print minion, but if minion isn't defined, then it won't print minion. But let's actually define something else at the top and say, and call it print minion. So at the moment, print minion is defined. So we can say, if print minion is defined, print minion. But let's remove our print minion definition and now compile the program. And you'll see that it's saying that minion isn't defined. Although technically I suppose I should have written print minion there, but you get the idea. And now if I define this, then the statement after this if will be executed. And I'll just, oops, wrong area here. I'll just save that again and bring back the terminal. There's a lot of terminal in and out, unfortunately, in this. And you can say, hello, see that hello, I am a minion is printed. So pretty simple stuff then with the preprocessor that can make uh, a lot of things in your program obviously a lot quicker with the coding and also particularly for me always the code easier to read because I always define my constants and things using big capital letter things like this so when I look at the code a long time later I know what I'm referring to. And a case in point here is particularly when you're using numbers which are repeated at various points throughout the program. Another example you often see in C, for example, is you define um, true. And make it mess of the typing. You define true as one, and you probably define false as zero, so you can return true and false. Okay, so that's one application here. Another thing we can do, however, is we can actually write um, little functions, or in, indeed whole functions, with, with macros. And here's a little shortcut maybe you could take, although it's not a very nice one, but it gives the example. Let's Well, no, let's do another one first. First, if I could make a macro called add, and I'm sure. And, I, and then what you do is, after the definition, you can put in brackets some arguments. So let's have A, B, and C. And what will happen is the code here inside these brackets will then be substituted for add. I'll show you how inside the program. So we could simply say that we want to do A plus B plus C. And now wherever we put this add in, it'll be replaced by this code here. So if I want to say print F and I didn't do my paste, did I? So, and I've got print minion, never mind, that didn't last very long. So let's take this one here. Okay, so I can now say add and let's add four, five and six, like so, it should give us 15. And now what we can do is we can call our add macro on our 4, 5, and 6. And all that will do, we'll replace this section here then with 4 plus 5 plus 6, like so. So if I bring across the console again and just compile, and now you see that we've got add 4, 5, and 6 is 15. So you can add also functions in, well, essentially small little functions with the arguments like so.
And it allows you to take uh, a lot of shortcuts by doing this, particularly when the functions are a bit longer. So for example, we could do something which is particularly nasty code, and I would never actually use in a program, but just for example, we could make something called, let's say, a for loop. And we always have our index, so we'll call that i, and then we have our max that we want to go to. And we could replace this code with i equals naught, and then i is less than max, and plus plus i. And now if I go down the bottom here, and let's uh, make int index equals naught as usual. And now what I'm going to do is go for loop and index, and let's say index will go to less than or equal to 10. Whoops, there's a bracket run the way around there. And unbelievably, this will be the same as typing a for loop. So I can now just go with the print f. Have I still got one here? Hang on. Yep. So I'll just now say index and give the value then of index like so. So I'll just save that and now compile. And I thought I'd made a mistake there. Hang on a minute. What have I made as a mistake? Oh, I haven't put in the definition at the top of plus plus i. I'll just compile that again. Okay, that compiles this time. Sorry about that. It's sneaky off screen there. And now run the program. And now you can see it has indeed run our for loop with our values in index. So that's it really then for um, the, our, our video here. I just wanted to give a quick example of some of the things you can do with the preprocessor to make your programs run a lot easier and quicker. And particularly when you're looking maybe in the library files for C itself, so like the standard header, uh, standard library or something, you'll see a lot of these definitions, a lot of if defined. And then actually there's another one that you can use just before I finish the video. You could say if n D E F, so if not defined, that's another common one that you see. So if print minion is not defined, then print the minion. And now what will happen is it will say that print minion is not defined when I compile the program and run, as you can see here. Because what it's asking is, is if print minion is not defined. So there are lots of different ways you can use this. There are actually a couple more combinations of these ifs and else's, but um, you could look those up yourselves. The, uh, this is the main one, and this is really the main point to, to this video. So I hope that makes some sense, and thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.